Hi, it's Greg Harrell here with another Vim screencast. And as promised, this one is going to be about organization. Uh, now, there are a few different ways you could organize your Vim's, Vim files and configuration. Um, some of the obvious ones are just put everything in your VimRC. Um, another is try to break your stuff into plugins. Um, and then there's the way that I do it, uh, which I will show you now. Um, so I originally started off with all of my stuff in my VimRC, and you can see that here. Um, it's, at the moment, it's 66 lines long, so it's not very long at all. Um, and then I started using a plugin called Pathogen to pull in a bunch of third-party functionality. Uh, so what Pathogen does, in case you're not familiar with it, is add folders to the runtime path. That's really all it does. It is not a dependency management solution. It doesn't download or install plugins. It just adds folders to your runtime path. And so a common way to use this would be to clone a plugin that you want to use as a Git submodule, or even just download it into a place. Uh, and the conventional place for this was .vim slash bundle. And so you could have 10 or 20 different plugins. They would each have their own subdirectories in there. They wouldn't clash with one another. And Pathogen would modify the runtime path in such a way that Vim would be able to find the files in each and every one of those. And un uninstalling them becomes a simple matter of just removing the folder because you're not dumping everything in the shared Vim folders that you can see here on the screen. Um, before Pathogen, that is exact exactly what people did. They would just dump everything into plugin and you'd have all of the files jumbled together and good luck uninstalling that. So once you start using a tool like Pathogen or one of the later plugin managers that came along like Bundle and NeoBundle and all the others, um, you aren't really using these plugin folders as much anymore. There's no, not so much of a reason to do so. So I started using them to manage my own files. Uh, so effectively, I have thematically grouped things here under named files. Um, they're not actually plugins, but this is effectively like the directory of things that I do. So for example, all of my commands are in this commands file. As you can see, there's one. Uh, settings are in a settings file. Status line setup is in a status line file. The names pretty much say what they do. Um, and mappings, I've divided them into multiple files depending on what mode the mappings apply to. So I've got some command mappings, not, not too many. Um, most of the interesting ones are in leader. I'll probably do another screencast another time on mappings suggestions there, um, but I'm not going to go into it for now. So that's the plugin folder. Um, and I find this really useful, especially combined with the fuzzy file finder, because oh, let's see what directory I'm in. Yeah. Just say I, I know that I want to go to my status line folder. I can oh, just type a few letters from the word status and I'm there, right? Opening, editing the file um, rather than having to like scroll through a big VimRC or use a search inside of VimRC to find what I'm looking for. So part of it is sticking stuff in these plugin folders and likewise uh, code to detect what kind of file I'm in can go in the FT detect folder. Um, an example of that is detecting JSX on the basis of like whether or not the word react is in the file um, or detecting spec files based on what the file pattern looks like. Um, and then we have file specific, file type specific settings. So, uh, you know, for example, I have some stuff that I turn on when I'm in a git commit message, like spell checking. Um, when I'm in markdown, I turn on plain text mode. Um, and I guess one thing to note here is that this just calls an auto loaded function. Auto loaded functions are interesting too. So uh, let's have a look at one of those. Um, so. I think the one that I was looking at was the plain text function. The reason why auto loaded functions are interesting is because Vim doesn't waste any time at startup evaluating them unless you use them. So in the case of a markdown file, it's not until I actually get into one that it is going to load this functions file and evaluate the plain text. So that helps keep Vim startup time fast. So effectively, if you can split your stuff up like this, um, put the core settings and stuff into the plugin folder and call into auto loaded functions as necessary. Um, and the other place you might want to put stuff is in this after folder. So this will be loaded by Vim after the file of the corresponding name has been loaded. So settings that I want to apply to a nerd tree after it loads go in after plugin nerd tree and I've just got some settings in there. Um, and the same for various other plugins. So that's the high level organization. Um, and one other thing that I want to point out before I go is that 
with Vim 8, which is not out yet, it will have its own pathogen-like functionality built into it. Um, Vim 8 is not out, but if you use a tool like Homebrew to build a recent master branch version, you actually have this functionality already. So at the moment, I've got something that I built from Homebrew. It says here compiled 11th of May, so uh, just under a month ago. And this has, if you look here, it has this packages feature that's been enabled. So packages is the name for the feature that does runtime path management. And effectively, default package path, um, which I can't remember. PP, is that the setting? Yeah, pack path. So the default path is that one. Um, it's effectively going to look for a file called pack in all of those places. And if it finds it, it's going to look for subdirectories that are basically groups of plugins. Um, I've used the word bundle for the subdirectory because of my habit of using the word bundle with pathogen. And all of the things that are in the start folder are going to load at boot time. And all of the things that are in the opt folder are going to load only on demand when I tell them to. So effectively what I have here are my plugins in the start folder, everything except pathogen. And Vim will load them for me when I'm on a sufficiently recent version of Vim. And when I'm on an old version of Vim, we're going to actually go into this opt folder, load pathogen, and get it to load those other files for me. So I'll show you how that works. So uh, here in the VMRC, somewhere, yeah. So effectively, if the Vim that I'm using has this packages feature enabled, I'm gonna tell it to load all the packages. Otherwise, we're gonna basically fire up pathogen by sourcing its file, and then tell it to set up the runtime path, and voila, this will work both on modern Vim with packages and on older Vim without packages. Um, so that's the theme of organization for today. Um, and that's all I've got to say. Thanks for listening.